I would say that a traditional CPO probably has a typical day. I would say during the state of COVID right now, I would say that it's probably less typical than most. So for me being that what I do and I play the dual role as the assistant chief information security officer, I do a variety of things. So, you know, I don't come in every day and open a manual and say, these are the things that I need to do every single day. It's really, you know, it could be me working on policy or advising on data classification for the university or, um, you know, updating a compliance program or analyzing risk on a system or a unit. So I've um, been working with my great team. So at the end of the day, there is no typical day, but I will tell you that's what's appealing to me. You know, for me, I don't want to come into a job every day that has a boilerplate, you know, agenda. I like the fact that I'm able to come in and I can do a variance of things. So that's very, very um, appeasing to me. There are certifications for privacy professionals. So there's actually though only one organization um, that provides or offers the certifications that I'm aware of um, and that is industry known and that's the IAPT. So they do ones that are for privacy managers. They do ones for international privacy. Um, they do just a certification for privacy. So I will say that um, for me, industry and corporate is very, very um, heavy on wanting certifications. As you see job postings for privacy professionals, you will see some sort of privacy certification. Um, higher ed, I think I could go either way, the importance. I think that, it, you know, for me, that is something I'm actually pursuing this year. Um, but one of the things that I think is really important in higher education is really having that effective communication because we're not just dealing with one set of stakeholders. We're dealing with faculty and staff and students and researchers. So being able to take what we're trying to do, which is understand regulation and law and policy and transition and translate it into something that is really actionable for our faculty, staff and students is really important. So one of the biggest challenges for me, um, and it comes with the role, so it's not like I didn't know this when I took the job or transitioned into the CPO position, was the varying um, state, federal, and international privacy laws. So it's not like the U.S. has one consistent privacy or data regulation. So we have each state has their own security and privacy policies and laws. Um, international privacy laws differ. Um, and then we have other federal laws. So we have healthcare compliance and we have financial compliance, all that have different requirements, similar in fashion, but different. So I will say for me as a CPO in a higher ed community where you have people from all over the globe, that is my biggest challenge in the role that I serve now. So I think that there's definitely industries that are going to be hot and are hot now and will be hot as years progress. And I think information security, millions of jobs out there right now. Privacy, I think that you will steadily and increasingly see more and more privacy related jobs, like I said, that aren't necessarily policy and non-technical driven, but also very technical driven. So I would say do your research, look and see what are those hot careers that are coming up. Um, and I think privacy will be one. It is now, you see a lot of institutions hiring CPOs um, or privacy engineers, um, and it's really a great opportunity. It's really diverse too in the work that you do, which is really appeasing to a lot of people. So I would say just do your research and see what's coming down the pike over the next couple of years.